What is a monorepo? If you've worked with Jenkins for any amount of time, you're probably used to creating jobs that point at a single repository that represents a single application. For example, let's say that you have an application that is made up of three parts, a front end and two back ends. Therefore, you have three separate code repositories. But how do you create a Jenkins job when the code for all three applications live in separate directories within a single repository? This scenario is what is known as a monorepo. Although this is a less common way to manage your source code, it's not completely abnormal. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways you can easily manage your Jenkins jobs, even when using a monorepo. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.303.3. Attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has two executors on it, and it also has Docker installed on it. When this Jenkins controller was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. I've also installed the Docker pipeline plugin. We also have a sample repository for this video. The link to that sample repository is down in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at that sample repository. What we have here is a repository that has a folder for front end, which in this case just has a text file. And then we also have a backend folder that actually has two separate folders, API and web. And each of these have a web text and an API text. These are just placeholders. We didn't need any real code in order to demonstrate how this is going to work. Let's go back up to the root of the repository and take a look at Jenkins file one. And with Jenkins file one, what we can see here is we are going to get a handle to an agent that has the label of Linux, which our agent that's connected to the controller has. And then based on the stage, we're going to use different tooling using via Docker. The front end one is going to be using Node. The back end for web is going to be using Maven. And then for the REST API, we're using Golang. So three separate container images based on the type of application that we're building. Now let's scroll back up top and see how this is really going to work. And it boils down to this win condition. Win change set, and what this means is from a get change set perspective, if any changes happened within the front end directory, so we're using ant pattern matching, so star star, we're looking for front end, and then any files within front end. And we're also double checking with a before agent, so we're actually not spinning up that agent. So we're going to evaluate whether or not this change set is associated to a change inside of front end. And if it is, then this agent gets started, and then we run the commands. So we're looking at our three different folders, front end, back end web, and back end API. So let's head back over to our controller and create a job. Before we do that, let me go ahead and grab my URL and let's click on new item. And I'm going to call this local, just because we'll call it local. And pipeline, okay and pipeline script from SCM, we'll change this to git. Here's our repository URL. We're on the main branch. And our script path is Jenkins file dash one. We'll go ahead and click on save. Now at this point, we've not made any changes to our repository. So if we run this job, we click on build now, what we're going to see is we're going to see a checkout of the repository. There's an empty change log, probably because this is the first build. That's true. So we're skipping front end, web, and REST API because of the change that was made, which was no change at all. So let's go ahead and go over and make some changes to the files within front end and back end and see how it reacts. So I'm going to load up my application here. And the first change I'm going to make is to front end. And I'm going to just type in some text, text, literally. We'll save that. And let's go ahead and commit this change 
to frontend.txt, which lives inside the frontend directory. So we'll say this is frontend. And we'll sync the change up. Okay, that change has been made. So now that we've made that change, let's go ahead and run our job for local. So we'll click on build now. And looking at build number two, we see the clone of our job. And then we can see that front end is starting up because this is our node agent. And we can see the output for NPM version, node and catting out front end. And then what we have, it stops it. And then we skip both web and REST API because the changes that were made were only made to the file in front end. Now let's go and make a change to both backends, to both web and to API. So let's take a look back over here at API. We'll say text, we'll save that one, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing here for API. And if we go ahead and check both of those, and commit those, we'll say that's text. And now let's go back over and run our job. What we should see this time is that no job will run for front end, which it appears that front end was skipped as expected because we made no changes since that last change set to front end, but we did have the backend for web and the backend for API both run their respective stages. And we can confirm that by taking a look here at the stages. Now let's think about the scenario where you have multiple mono repos. Sort of sounds weird, right? If you have a mono repo within an organization, you would think there would be one and only one mono repo. But in many organizations, instead of going down the full poly repo route, some teams will create a mono repo just for their application, even though the quote unquote application is made up of three, five, 10 different applications themselves. So if we have the case that we have right here, a front end and two back ends, and that pattern is used throughout numerous types of quote unquote applications, then how can we simplify this? What do I need to do in order to leverage using that exact same pipeline that I use for this mono repo for those other mono repos. Well, what we can do is we can create our own pipeline and reuse it through a shared library. So let's go back over to our repository and take a look at Jenkins file two. And what we have here is we're calling in a library, shared library, and the reference to this shared library is in the readme of the repository. And we're going to be calling mono repo pipeline. And what we're doing is passing in four parameters, a base agent, a front end agent, a back end web agent, and a back end API agent. Why are we passing those in if we're wanting to be able to use the same pipeline? Well, although the pipeline is the same, each of the different applications may need different versions of either Node, Maven, or Go. So this gives the teams the ability to change the versions of these specific agents when they need them. If we take a look at mono repo pipeline, we can see here that our pipeline from line eight down to 71 is practically exactly the same. The only differences are when we're referencing the agents. So in this case, pipeline params base agent or pipeline params front end agent as it references back to what's being passed in to mono repo pipeline. So if you're trying to figure out where pipeline params is coming from, it's coming from this definition where pipeline params is being loaded in to the values being passed in from the body. So let's go back over to our Jenkins controller and let's create a new job. We're gonna say new item. We're gonna call this multi and click on pipeline, click okay. We're gonna change pipeline script from SCM, get, here's our URL. We're gonna change our branch specifier to main and change our script path to dash two. We'll click on save. And again, no changes have been made to the repository yet. So we're gonna run it once and make sure that that is really true. So when we take a look at the output of build number one, we see what we saw in the very first run of Jenkins file one 
to where empty change log. No change log since the last commit. So now we're good. Well, let's go back over to our VS code and let's clean up all of these files. So API, web, and front end are all now going to be empty, but it's going to force a change in my change set. So let me go back over here. I didn't save these files, so save and save. Now we have three files. All three are gonna go in. We're gonna say save and sync changes. Go ahead and push that up. And now let's take a look back over at our job for multi. Click on build now. And when we look at the output for number two, we see our clone, we see our shared library coming in, and now we're seeing each stage for node, for Maven, and for Go. What kind of repository strategy should you follow when working with Jenkins? As we've seen, it is possible to successfully run Jenkins jobs for a mono repo. However, in order to keep the Jenkins side of the equation simple and manageable, you should opt for polyrepo over monorepo. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button and ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.